Video editing apps for smartphones and tablets have come a long way to the point where they're actually now practical. The most popular of which is LumaFusion. So coming from a colorist background, I wondered how good would it be for color grading and answer the question, can you get cinematic looking video with LumaFusion? Let's find out. All right, we're gonna jump right into LumaFusion on the iPad where I already have a small edit ready for color grading. I'll choose a hero shot and click the edit icon here at the bottom. This opens a new interface. On the top right corner, we'll find the color and effects editor, which contains presets and tools for color correction, blurs, distortions, chroma, and luma keys. The first section is color with presets that are meant for Rec. 709 footage, so they're not gonna work with my log footage right off the bat. Then comes the LUT section where you'll find the built-in LUTs plus you can import your own. We won't be going into the other sections for filters, blurs, and keys, and instead stick to just those related to color grading. Now the first step is to perform a base correction, taking the clip from log to Rec. 709. We can do it manually or use a conversion LUT. One problem in LumaFusion is you can't apply more than one LUT to a shot, meaning you can't apply a log to Rec. 709 conversion LUT and then apply a creative look LUT later. So I think our best option is to manually do the color correction from scratch. That way we still have options for applying a creative LUT later. To get started with our correction, we'll go to the preset section and choose original, which gives us a whole set of color correction tools. First are the levels, which has three points that allow us to control the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And two more on both sides of the midtones point. These act as sort of a contrast control to help us fine tune the contrast. Now we want to address this flat looking image, so we'll bring the midtones down and then the highlights up, which adds the contrast we need. Now keep in mind, I'm doing this just by eye as LumaFusion doesn't have scopes, so there is no scientific way of judging what is the best exposure and color balance. So I suggest trusting your instincts and do your best. Then we have sliders for brightness, overall contrast, and saturation. I don't think the shot needs any of those, but you can modify these in three different ways using the slider, the left and right arrow icons, and the edit icon, which opens up a calculator-like panel where you can type the exact value. Then comes the Vibrant slider, which lets you raise or lower saturation while leaving the skin tones intact. Then a section dedicated to refining highlights and shadows. The highlight amount adjusts the highlights level without affecting the shadows, and the shadow amount does the same for the shadows without affecting the highlights. There is another slider here called Highlight Shadow Radius. It increases the contrast between the bright and dark areas. As I move the slider from 0 to 10, the image goes from having soft edges to contrasty, almost sharpened edges. I'll leave it at 3. Next, we have three controls for color temperature. Each slider adjusts the temperature between a primary color, red, green, and blue, and their secondary counterparts, cyan, magenta, and yellow. The gamma slider controls how smoothly black transitions to white on the image, and it's a way for modifying brightness and contrast. Hue changes the overall hue or color of the image. And finally, the tint control acts as an automatic white balance tool. You can use the eyedropper to pick a white area of the image so it modifies the color temperature based on that. In this case, the clip doesn't have a white area, so we'll skip that. Let's see the before and after. It's a pretty good base correction. Now it's important to note that if you wanted to make any secondary corrections or isolated changes, like say changing the color of the sky, or changing just the skin tones, that isn't something that is supported. You're really limited to only making global changes that affect the entire image. But you know, hey, it wasn't a problem with this shot. Now usually my next step would be shot matching and then applying a grade to the whole edit using an adjustment layer or to a group of shots if that's supported. But LumaFusion doesn't support any of those features, so we are stuck grading clips on a clip-by-clip -clip basis. We can, however, copy grades from one clip to another, so let's finish grading this clip with a look LUT and then copy the grade to other clips in the timeline. For a look, I'll move to the LUTs section and import a LUT. Here I have a look LUTs folder from our 70 LUTs master collection, which you can download for free. It includes log to Rec. 79 LUTs, creative look LUTs, and 13 film emulation LUTs for Agfa, Fuji, Kodak, and Polaroid film stocks. 
I'll include a link in the card above where you can download these. I'll import the drive LUT and apply it to the clip. It's too strong right off the bat, so let's bring the blend value up. Our next step is matching shots. I'll move out of the color and effects editor, copy the attributes of the clip, select all the clips in the timeline with the select tool, and paste the correction. As you can see, most of the clips in the timeline don't match with our hero shot. So we'll have to go clip by clip and modify the base correction. And here's the tricky part. Because there isn't a way to compare clips side by side or scopes to help us further, we're gonna have to jump back and forth between the clips and our hero shot and match by eye. So let's start with this shot. We'll darken it, add some saturation, and move the color balance towards red. Back to the edit, we can now see this looks closer to the hero shot. I just have to repeat this process for each shot coming back to the timeline. With practice, you can get good at this, but it is a slow painstaking process. So my conclusion is, although you can get nice results, it's really difficult to color grade an entire project inside of LumaFusion. In a real life situation where you'd have different cameras, lighting changes, etc., it's gonna be very difficult to match your shots. On the other hand, what I do love about this editing software is the simple fact that the interface isn't overly complex and I absolutely love the touch interface. Now this concept or idea of being able to interact more directly with your media is what inspired CinemaGrade. So if you like the ease of use of LumaFusion and your filmmaker who regularly does work on a desktop in Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro, then you'll love this innovative grading plugin. It also has a simple, easy to use interface and you can actually color grade right directly in the viewer by clicking and dragging on things to change the exposure, to even change the color of the sky in just two clicks. If you're working on a Windows computer with a touch interface or an iPad with Apple Sidecar enabled, you can grade right directly on the device with a pencil. Filmmakers also love the ability to do shot-to-shot -shot matching in a side-by-side -side viewer and the ability to preview all their LUTs as thumbnails. With a guided approach, CinemaGrade makes getting professional cinema results super fast and easy. If you do work on a desktop with any of these applications and you'd like to learn more about CinemaGrade, I'll include a link for it in the description below. For a limited time, you can also get 20% off CinemaGrade with discount code YouTube20. For more videos like this, click the subscribe button and then the bell to get notified of our next one. I'll see you in the next video. Let's make the grade.